In a near field situation, I have never heard a speaker soundstage or image as well as this one. Hey, I'm Randy and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we help others find high value, hi-fi home theater, headphone products. And today we're talking about the sound artist. It's a speaker, the SC65B. It's the sound artist. SC65B, that rolls right off the tongue. Concentric driver speaker. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about this unique speaker. Okay, today's sponsor, let's see if I can get it in there. Yeah, there we go. Skynet, internet security. We all know how scary it can be getting on the worldwide internet web with your computer and being scared of ransomwares and Trojans and all sorts of internet tomfoolery. Well, don't worry about it anymore because Skynet by cyber nine systems has developed a foolproof way of keeping your computer and all your digital media safe. That's Skynet by cyber nine systems. Nothing can possibly go wrong. The sound artist, SC65B, what does that mean? 65 means 6.5 inch woofer. This is a paper woofer or wood pulp. There's a whole bunch of wood type stuff pressed into this woofer. The tweeter is a one inch aluminum dome tweeter mounted in a, I was hoping it'd go ding, it didn't. Metal horn. It's a real horn, not a plastic horn, real one. If I put this up to my mouth, I could, amplify my voice so that other people could hear it or if i put it up to my ear i could hear better it's real made from metal this speaker is reportedly rated down to 38 hertz on the bottom all the way up to 20,000 hertz on the top it's eight ohms and has a sensitivity of 90 db which is good you can run this off of tube amps very easy to drive speaker. On the front, you have two very unique front ports. They're pretty big too. It has a piano black finish, very nice, very shiny, very well done. Probably one of the better speakers that I've seen around $500. On the back, you have simple five-way binding posts. One set, so you can't buy amp or buy wire them, which is fine by me, because I've only done that maybe once. I was very excited to get this speaker because I have seen these. China Hi-Fi Audio sent these to me. And they've sent me a few tube amps in the past and I've always had my eye on these. These and then there's an eight inch version. The British Audiophile reviewed either the six and a half inch, but I think he reviewed the eight inch version of these. He's got an awesome channel. So go check out his video of the bigger ones. These are obviously a bit top heavy. Makes sense, right? The driver's right up here. They're braced pretty good. I mean, they're not like, they don't sound like a cinder block. For as much open area down here for the ports, I'm impressed. They're very good. I don't think they're going to vibrate too much. They didn't for me, at least. Let's talk about soundstage and imaging. Soundstage and imaging. If there's one standout feature to this speaker about its behavior, speaker behavior, it's got to be the soundstage and imaging. When I put these up, I didn't even try, and it threw a huge soundstage. All of the MTV unplugged records, and really anything, as long as a track has some type of placement of the performers and or instruments, this thing is going to tell you where they are at. Initially out of the box, they really surprised me with their depth of soundstage, but the soundstage is also wide and it is also higher than the speaker. And I think it has a lot to do with this thing right here, throwing a big soundstage. A lot of times I have to talk a speaker into sound staging or imaging well, not this thing. In a near field situation, I have never heard a speaker sound stage or image as well as this one. Generally speaking, the rule of thumb is to get an equilateral triangle. So if you have the speakers five feet apart, you sit five foot away. I found when I got a little bit closer up into it. So if you have the speakers five feet apart, sit three and a half foot or sit four foot away. I got an immersive musical experience that rivals anything that I've heard. It's that good. This speaker sound stages and images better than any other speaker I've ever heard. 
it's fantastic center imaging is locked on very easily achievable i didn't hardly have to do any tweak i didn't do any tweaking to get the center image if you're in a bigger room dependent upon the sidewalls you may have to adjust things but as far as being forgiving when it comes to imaging i don't think you're going to find a better speaker let's talk about bass The bass is not leaning overall punchy. It's leaning overall smooth with a very nice roll off, probably starting to roll off around 60 hertz, maybe even higher. The reason I say that is because one can hear very deep notes like Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys. That song goes very deep and depending upon the roll off of your speaker, you can get an idea of just how bassy and deep that song is Killing Strangers by Marilyn Manson not only is a good song for soundstage and imaging but also a good bass song because it's very punchy so here's the thing about these speakers it's a neutral it's very neutral when it comes to bass so things like Killing Strangers are going to be punchy songs like Highway to Hell by ACDC though the bass drum is very tight it depends on what the music is giving you this is not going to mold your sound the way it wants it to it's going to give you what the recording is on the bass but let's put a pin in that because we're going to come back to that in the mid-range overall there's a lot to like on the bass stand-up bass acoustic instruments non heavy metal and, and I know I listen to a lot of metal and rock but jazz is going to sound fantastic through these. This is not going to be the fastest bass in the world because this is not a sealed enclosure, okay? If that woofer extends, it's going to take a while for it to come back. So if you want the quickest, fastest bass out there, this probably isn't the speaker for you. And probably no ported speaker is going to be for you. You probably want to look for a sealed enclosure. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Let's talk about mid-range. <laughs> So mid-range is going to be where this speaker either makes you fall in love with it or makes you hate it. It depends on what you like. I'll just get this out of the way. With a metal horn, with an aluminum tweeter, the top of the mid-range can get a bit shouty or nas nasally. Hey, baby, nasally. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know who that was an impersonation of. It's probably like an impersonation of an impersonation of know, Sammy Davis. Sammy Davis Jr., baby. It's bad, like Sammy Davis Jr. and Kermit the Frog combined, okay? Let's go back to the speaker. So the top and the mid-range, there's a bit of a metallic sheen to it, which makes sense because there's a metal horn. It's not necessarily a bad thing, though. What it is, is it doesn't seem completely natural. Kurt Cobain, MTV Unplugged, his voice had a tendency to seem thin, but also a bit edgy and metallic on the top. I'm not saying this is a bad thing unless you are looking for complete perfection with reproduction of the music. If you want a bit of a flavor, then this speaker is something you should consider. While the mid-range is somewhat thin when it comes to acoustic guitars, lower male vocals, female vocals are really good. Hello by Adele was fantastic because there's some reverb or something going on with this as well that really adds to the music and it adds to male vocals as well and it adds to acoustic guitars on the upper end of the mid-range but this definitely does not feel like a warm speaker at all more of a forward presentation and either you're going to a hate it b be like oh okay well that's kind of cool or c maybe it's just a and b Maybe it's just two choices. You're either going to hate it or you're going to... Okay, there's three choices. You're going to hate it, you're going to love it, or you're going to be like, yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. A little bit different flavor to the mid-range. Let's talk about treble. <laughs> Reoccurring theme with the horn. The treble has very good initial attack. Decay is presented a little bit differently. It's a little bit more pronounced on this, and it has a tendency to sound well very metallic again this is weird symbol so a symbol metal hit with a wooden stick but this sounds almost like it's you're closer into the symbol as it decays it's very different it's subtle but it's there there is a vibe to the upper mid-range and a vibe to the treble 
It has everything to do with the aluminum driver in this horn. Treble is separated. Treble is different. There's no veil, so that's the good thing. There's nothing covering up detail on this speaker. No veil. But there is definitely a flavor here. What are my final thoughts? Final thoughts. At $500, this is one of the most interesting speakers that I've heard and one that I think some people should consider. And those people are more advanced in their hi-fi journey. Someone that already has a speaker that they like and are looking for a different flavor. The speaker is also for people that are looking to get something that is more efficient that will pair well with tube gear. Because at 90 dB, offset some of that forward nature in the upper mid range and I think you got a winning combination. I probably wouldn't recommend this for people that are just getting into hi-fi. But folks that have been around, folks that can appreciate different sound signatures, this is a very special speaker. This speaker sound stages and images better than any other speaker I've heard. It has a distinct mid-range that is not a deal breaker for me. It may be for some people, but for me it's not because it presents in a different way. And after listening to it for a while, it wasn't obvious jumping off the page that this thing was shouty at all. I will say, if you get a lot of juice going through this thing and you have the wrong electronics hooked up to it, it will get very intense, very forward on the upper mid-range. Gear that is more warm, has a bit more body, is going to pair up better with this. This didn't pair well with lower end Class D amplifiers. The SMSL DA9 did pair well with this, as well as my Pioneer SX3700. It's a vintage receiver, it sounded real, real nice. But I think this is a fantastic speaker. I don't think it's for everybody though. I don't think it's for beginners. This is a speaker, if we're in speaker college, this is not speaker theory 101. This is speaker theory 404, maybe a master's level speaker course. This is for advanced hi-fi enthusiasts. Maybe not. I mean, most people are probably going to be able to enjoy it as well, but I don't think you'll be able to truly appreciate this unless you've heard a few other speakers. All in all, I think it's great if you know what you're getting yourself into. Very well built, very distinct sounding speaker. Everything's done well. It's a different presentation in the mid-range. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com says cheap audio. Man, every Sunday night we have Patreon only Zooms. We're also a Patreon only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Amazon Music. There's a link in the description. Click on the link. It's the cheapest way to enjoy high-res music. And they pay, as in Amazon pays the artists, more than any other streaming service out there. You can also use the links to purchase this product or any other products. There are three of these left on Amazon. You can also get these from China Hi-Fi Audio. $500 delivered to the U.S. and Canada and some other countries as well. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen through your new sound artist, SC65B speakers, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. <music>